Yes, sir. What's up, boys? We back with another video, and in this video, I'm gonna tell you guys what you can expect from the Nets going into the off season. So I'm gonna cover five topics. The first topic is gonna be off season contracts. Second topic is gonna be free agency. Third topic is gonna be trade rumors. Fourth topic is gonna be the draft, and the fifth topic is questions for Brooklyn Nets fans going into the next season. Before I get into it, make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to grow this channel. Each like, each sub helps. Been getting a lot of good feedback on these NBA videos lately, so as long as you guys keep giving me good feedback, I'll keep dropping them. And I have an announcement for you guys. I'll be doing a live stream on November 18th to cover the draft. So the NBA draft is on November 18th. I'll be going live on YouTube just reacting to the draft when it comes on. Be talking shit with you guys. We'll just have a good time. If you like drinking, bring a drink. If you like smoking, bring some smoke. Whatever the fuck you're into. So yeah, the the live stream is on the 18th. Anyways, without no more delay, I've been following the NBA for two decades. I've been researching the Nets for the past hour or so. So let's get straight into it. We're going to start with the topic number one of five, which is the Nets, who they're keeping and who they're letting go. So right now on the Nets, they have 11 players under contract and their salary cap is $135 million. So they have $135 million committed to 11 players. The salary cap for next year is $109 million. So they're already over the salary cap. The luxury tax threshold is $132 million. They're already over that. Why is that important? Because once you go over the luxury tax, your flexibility and the moves that you're able to make has changed. Okay, so this is the players that they have on the team right now. KD, Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, uh, Jared Allen, Spencer Dinwiddie, Karis LeVert, DeAndre Jordan, Dizananan Musa. I don't know how you pronounce that boy's name. Um, Torian Prince, Rodion's Kuruks. These names are tough, boy. Nicholas Claxton, Luau Cabarro, and DeAndre Jordan. I think I said Karis LeVert already, but those are the players that they have under contract on the team. In terms of team and player options, they only have one team option, and it's to Garrett Temple for $5 million. Ian Begley on November 3rd, I believe, reported that the Nets are likely to decline that team option and let Garrett Temple walk. So me personally, I don't think that's a good idea. I think it's a better idea to keep Garrett Temple and use his salary as a trade piece going into the season. I understand that if you were to let him go, you could re-sign a replacement, but the difference is you would have to re-sign that replacement at the minimum. Garrett Temple makes $5 million. The replacement would be making a minimum, which is like a million or less. Why is that important? Because when you want to make trades, sometimes when you want to make trades for stars and shit like that, like which I'm going to get into trade rumors in the next topic, well, after a free agency, you need salary filler. The difference between Garrett Temple and a minimum contract is like, say you wanted to trade for someone that made $20 million dollars, and you had $15 million worth of salary in the trade, you could add Garrett Temple's $5 million to, ma to match that $20 million salary. Whereas if you had a minimum contract, someone who's the same level of skill at, as Garrett Temple, you would still need to add more filler to match those salaries. Does that make sense to you guys? So me personally, I think they should keep Garrett and use him as a trade piece, but I understand that Ian Begley reported that they're likely to decline it. So... That's in terms of their options. Now they're free agents. So on the team, the Nets have Joe Harris, free agent, Wilson Chandler, free agent, and then the rest of their free agents are all scrubs. So I'm not even going to get into those guys. They're going to let all those guys walk except for Joe Harris. The Nets are going to re-sign Joe Harris to a $15 million per year deal, probably two or three years. Um, I think he's about 30 now. He, this, he's going to have a lot of competition on this market. Teams are rumored to go after him are the Knicks. And was it the Pistons? It was the Knicks and another team with cap space, but I can't remember who. But there's teams interested in Joe Harris. He's a 45 to 43% three-point shooter over the past three or four seasons. He's a great player. He could contribute a lot to winning on a winning team. So I see the Nets re-signing him to a $15 million per year deal. Now we're going to move on to free agency. Topic number two of five. So in free agency, as I told you guys, the Nets are capped out. They're already over the luxury tax which means they're not going to have the non-taxpayer MLE. They're working with the tax mid-level exception, which is $5.7 million. What does that mean? They're going to have to sign a free agent for less than that, or exactly that. So I came up with some names. 
that the the Nets should target in free agency. Me personally, I think the Nets are pretty much solid at every position except for power forward. They don't have any true power forwards on the team. I understand that Kevin Durant is going to play a lot of time at power forward, maybe even center sometimes in real small ball lineups. But the team needs a true power forward just in case injuries and shit like that. It doesn't hurt to have a power forward, especially because the Nets are a contending team. They're in a unique position where they can sign a player for less money because that player looks at them as a contender and thinks that they might have a chance to win with them. So some names that I came up with. Now, these names will only work if these players are willing to take a discount on their salary to play with the Nets. So these are the names I came up with. Serge Ibaka, 38% three-point shooter, great rebounder, great interior defender. Paul Millsap, 43% three-point three shooter. He's a vet. He's been around for so long. He can contribute to winning in many ways. Jermichael Green, 38% three-point shooter, good rebounder. I don't know how his blocks are, but he can play power forward and center, and he played well for the Clippers last year. And Markeith Morris. That's the last name I found that would be interesting for the Nets at power forward. Markeith Morris, 38% three-point shooter, brings toughness to that team. And I think the Nets could use a guy like that because when you look down the lineup, the only real tough, tough player that you're going to have, like the real junkyard dog on that team is DeAndre Jordan. Katie and Kyrie, they're more like keep to themselves, silent type of guys, more technical, skilled guys. Sometimes you need a guy that's going to just get dirty and like play hard for you in the playoffs. So I think Markeith Morris can fit that bill. Me personally, of the names that I've listed, my favorite fit for the Nets would be Paul Millsap. Paul Millsap, if the Nets could sign Paul Millsap for the ta for the tax MLE, that'd be perfect for them. He's a veteran. He can play four, and he can play alongside Kyrie and KD perfectly. He just needs to space the floor, catch the ball, shoot. That's it. Get some rebounds. So now we're going to get into the trade rumors, topic number three of five. So this trade has been going around for a while now. I actually made a video on this trade a few months ago or maybe last month. And the trade rumor is Drew Holiday. So the Nets are rumored to look for a third star in Drew Holiday. Now, for this trade to happen, these are the rumored packages that are on the table. So the Nets will offer the Pelicans a trade centered around Dinwiddie or Karis LeVert. For the Dinwiddie trade, the package would be Spencer Dinwiddie, Jarrett Allen, Musa, and a future protected first round pick. For the Karis LeVert trade, the package would include Karis LeVert and Jarrett Allen for Drew Holiday. Of those two trades, uh, Nets fans, how do you guys feel about those packages? Who do you think says no? And do you like those packages? Which one do you like better? Do you guys think Drew Holiday would be a good fit on the Nets? Me personally, I think Drew Holiday would be a great fit for the Nets. He's one of the best perimeter defenders in the league. He's a great guard. He's not really a true superstar, but definitely a star in this league. He won um, best best teammate last year. He was he got the award for best teammate. So he's a great locker room guy. Someone you love to have. So I really think that Drew Holiday would be a great fit for the Nets. Just help them with their chemistry. A guy that can kind of quell the storm in the locker room when, you know, Kyrie can kind of say stuff that is kind of incendiary. What is the word? Incendiary? I, I don't know. My vocabulary is horrible. But you know what I'm trying to say. So... Those are the trade rumors. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about that. So now we're going to topic number four, which is the draft. So going into the draft, the Nets have the 19th pick and the 55th pick in the second round. So personally, I think the Nets should target either a point guard or a wing. Why do I think that? I think that they should target a point guard or a wing that's able to replace some of the minutes that Karis LeVert and Spencer Dinwiddie used to provide. That's if they trade for Drew Holiday. So this just gives them more flexibility to be able to let go of Dinwiddie and Karis LeVert and know that they have someone that can fill some of those wing minutes. So some of the names that I came up with are Josh Green, who's a 6'6 shooting guard, defender, and can be a really good defender in the league. And his shooting will improve once he gets around guys like KD and Kyrie and the Nets coaching staff. He'll develop as years go on. And I think he can contribute right away because he has an NBA-ready body. So the next name that I came up with was Desmond Bain. 
Desmond Bain, a 6'5 shooting guard. He's a senior, shooting 45% from three last year in college. Playmaking very well, rebounding very well. This guy's ready to contribute right away. I really like Desmond Bain for the Nets. I think he would be a great fit. Type of guy where if you trade Karis LeVert, he's coming right in and he can contribute off the bench with the shooting guard or small forward position. And I think he's a great fit. Desmond Bain and Josh Green both would be a great fit for the Nets. Let me know down below in the comments who else you guys think would be a good fit for the Nets in the draft. With pick number 55, I think they should... Hey guys, the video got cut off. Got cut off. But with pick number 55, I think they should take whatever is the best player available. Don't really think about it too much. The Nets need a, a player that they can just put in their system and let develop slowly over time. Uh, yeah, so... That's my tips regarding the draft. Now we're going to go into the last topic of the five topics I've covered, which is questions for you Net fans. My question is, what moves do you guys want to see the Nets make going into this season? What moves do you guys want to see the Nets make? Already as you're constructed, you guys are championship contenders in the East. So what moves do you guys want to see your team make just to make you guys that much better? Comment down below and let me know what moves you guys want to make. Anyways, that's it, guys. I'm out of here. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel. Remember, I'm going live on November 18th for the very first time. We're going to react to the draft, chill, talk some shit, have some fun. So I love you guys. Have a good day.